from Studio 43 of the CBC building. It is George Stromalopoulos tonight for the late edition. Shall we? Boyfriend George Trombalabas, what a pleasure to be with you. It's always lovely to be back here on a new day, on a new week. How's your weekend? <laughs> what about a woo means? Does that mean more than once? I'm uh, very excited about the show this week. Tomorrow, Malcolm Gladwell is going to be in the red chair. Wednesday, Scott Russell. Thursday, Helen Fielding, aka the Bridget Jones author. And so excited today, Robbie Robertson is in the red chair. Nice. Huge parties over the weekend in Hamilton and in Regina. The 101 seasons of Grey Cup greatness. Don't tell me how it ends. I know we're on 101 seasons. I'm only on season three. I've got all the DVDs. They're all stacked up. And I'm a little behind. Although somebody on Twitter had to spoil it for me and tell me that Tom Hanks made a cameo in season 101. And I think that was uncool. He didn't spoil the ending, did he? <laughs> I've only got 98 seasons to go. I can catch up over the holidays. Uh, Tom Hanks, Martin Short, and other greats weren't the only ones there. The nation's father also took key time away from dodging questions in the House of Commons. He hit up the city of Infinite Horizons. Now, before you sit there going, doesn't he have work to do? He does have work to do. The Prime Minister was also there. Uh, apparently, he found some possible Senate candidate replacement people, which I think is very exciting. I, um... <laughs> I remain very optimistic. The person on the, with, the, with the fur thing on the head, that's gonna replace, uh... Mike Duffy, I guess. Uh, the other person is going to replace uh, Ms. Wallen, I suppose. The key question, though, is who's going to replace Patrick Brazo? Speaking of, today is the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Real men don't hit women. I call for all men to join me in standing up to violence directed at women and girls. I am Antonio Banderas, goodwill ambassador for United Nations Development Program. And I'm asking you, if you see something, do something. Stand up to end violence against women now. I know we live in Canada and people go, oh, this is just an international thing, not so much back at home. But let me give you some uh, concerning numbers. According to StatsCan, half of Canadian women have experienced an incident of physical or sexual violence since they turned 16. Half. And the Native Women's Association of Canada estimates more than 600 First Nations women have disappeared in the last 20 years. The United Nations has even urged Canada to investigate, so this is serious. Lots of stuff happened today. Shall we deal with it? <laughs> one, um, one quick second. I, uh, I woke up this morning and I started to hear all this, this, this chatter on the internet and on the sports radio stations about a possibility of the Buffalo Bills moving to Toronto and John Bon Jovi being a part of the organization. Bo John Bon Jovi? Do you know how hard it is for me to sit here and stare at you in the eyes, Canada, in your heart? and not make references to John's beautiful songs. I'd like to think that I'm evolved. I've evolved past that, but it's clear that I'm only halfway there. <laughs> but, but I make no jokes. So I know people are watching us in Buffalo. Buffalo, Buffalonians, can you please meet me on the Jim Kelly's fourth quarter honey garlic chicken wing camera for one second? Not every Torontonian wants your team. The Buffalo Bills belong in Buffalo. They should stay in Buffalo because they make you want to shout, kick your ass, kick your ass. I don't want your team, I want your rivalry. And we really need a team in Toronto so people like me who support Washington can find a new team to support that doesn't have a racist football name. Okay, so. <laughs> also, in Toronto, I know of a guy who could coach because he loves football and his schedule has just cleared up. Um, <laughs> look, look at this. Uh, Where's my defensive coordinator? Well, you don't have one, clearly, by your choices. Check out this tweet from journalist Antonella Artuzzo. Tuz says this, Litter Prevention Group says Mayor Rob Ford's alleged littering offense lost in other alleged transgressions. <laughs> Man, we are reaching when we're going for litter. We are reaching. This, although, after the head of a litter prevention group, Sheila White, wrote this about Mayor Rob Ford. Littering is a gateway crime, according to Mayor... <laughs> I want to take it seriously. And so I will. Don't dismiss it, brother. Follow me here on this one, okay? Step one, litter. Step two, expect someone else to clean up your mess. Step three, you expect them to clean up your mess while you're not even acknowledging that you did in the first place. Step number four, 
people catch you on video doing it, catch you in a lie, step five, then you tell everybody you admitted it, even though you didn't actually admit anything, you got caught before you admitted it, that's not called admitting it, that's just being found out for what you are. <laughs> step six, blame everybody else for your problem, step seven, crack. You see a direct line? <laughs> that's how it goes. Listen. Um, for, uh, this show emanates from the city of Toronto at the corner of Front and John, right down, that's not where we are, but that's obviously the, uh, one of the city halls that we have here. And Toronto gets a lot of bad recognition because the rest of Canada loves to make fun of Toronto all the time. <laughs> but I say this to Torontonians, congratulations. The group called Youthful Cities has said Toronto is number one for issues like diversity and youth employment. So how about a hand for the big city, huh? Who did we beat, huh? New York and Berlin, two incredible cities, and you're sitting there, how is it possible that Toronto beat New York and Berlin at anything? And I will tell you, we employed a tried and true Canadian offensive maneuver. It was the Leonard Cohen. First we take Manhattan, then we take Berlin. <laughs> and the people who just laughed, out of themselves as over 40. Toronto did actually lose ground in a couple of issues. They weren't so high ranking on safety, mental health, and civic participation. I wonder why that is. <laughs> And now it's time for the hit segment called... Hey, you know this game. Animals that look like... <coughs> animals that look like... <coughs> I, uh, the first time I saw that, I didn't catch the dog that looked like the Ayatollah. <laughs> that was <laughs> unbelievable. Animals that look like... <coughs> Would you like to meet Patch? Patch is a cross between a French bulldog <laughs> and a Shih Tzu. <gasps> Not a purebred. Ooh, the Fasaland won't like that. It's hard to love the guy that looks like that, but it's hard to hate him as well. I'm talking about the dog, not the jerk on the other side. His owner says that the pooch bears no resemblance to Adolf Hitler, except for one thing. When he wants the dog to go for a walk, he has to say, come on, boy, who wants to invade Poland? Who wants to invade Poland, everybody? 